it started with a wish in the neighborhood to preserve the park, preserve green space, and stop any construction in Riverside Park and the area south of it. The Urban Ecology Center is a nonprofit organization based in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, that's dedicated to teaching citizens of Milwaukee, both young and old, about outdoor sciences in order to ignite a love of nature within themselves. The organization began in 1991 when a retired scientist in residence at Riverside High School named Elsa Anko took notice of the crime rate in Riverside Park and decided that she wanted to change it for the better. 1990, I think, uh, the founder, Elsa Anko, showed me the site contacted the park people because she wanted other people who were in favor of creating a nature center in this location. The group signed the necessary papers to become a nonprofit organization on Elsa Uncle's kitchen table and officially became the Urban Ecology Center. Environmental awareness to me was the key to if we humans can start being aware of our actions, um, we can uh, maybe turn this ship around and, and be more in harmony with the nature that provides us the sustenance to live. In 1993, the organization purchased a double-wide trailer from Fox Point, Wisconsin and used that to run programs out of. The Neighborhood Environmental Education Project, also known as NEEP, began from the trailer and schools across Milwaukee were brought in and taught about nature and conservation. Running the organization out of the trailer was um, you know, I think we're a little nostalgic about it now. It was not easy to have a space that wasn't great to necessarily work from when you didn't have even a bathroom in the building or any running water. It was a very creative process and it was very crowded in the space. And it also was, um, because of that tightness, it was very much a, a family feel. When you had one space that was an office and one space that was a classroom with a, a window in between that we had this board that we would put up so that when the class was going on that the sound from the office didn't go into the classroom. So we knew that in order to continue on in our work in the long run, we needed a new facility. In 2000, the organization began to draw plans for a bigger facility. I worked alongside with Ken to send out requests for proposals to architects for helping create an idea for a new building. One of our, our most significant um, donors, for example, um, Dick Burke, who is the founder of Trek Bicycles. When we first met with him, we were talking to him just about what we were hoping to achieve in, in the center, and, and we thought he might be interested in supporting an intern for us. So that was the kind of initial uh, conversation and he ended up being um, one of the major contributors to the capital campaign providing over two million dollars toward that campaign. All the stars were aligned to make this a success. The Riverside Park building was completed in 2004 with unique features like solar panel roofs, a 40-foot climbing wall, an animal room, and a public art space. The center began to thrive even more with the new building. Community engagement and memberships began to increase tenfold. School children fulfill their requirements in school um, and you have something that the whole neighborhood can be proud of because it's a growing, innovative um, outfit. I mean, I remember those first few years of, of being in this, in this new building. It was just, people would come and just be wowed because they didn't know anything about us. Um, and I think people still come into this building and feel wowed. Our reach has expanded so, bit, so much more. And the membership has, you know, at least quadrupled in size. I mean, the general response is it's a pretty feel-good operation doing really important work. So it, it's hard not to, I mean, it's hard to criticize it in the sense that who, what, what's wrong with getting folks outside. With the success of the Riverside Building, the organization decided to open a satellite facility in Washington Park in 2007. They were able to reach a new demographic of people and expand their NEAT program. Yeah, when Washington Park opened, it was a really exciting time for us here at Riverside Park just because we were, we were expanding into a new community and it was exciting to have new staff coming in. Um, you know, Washington Park is singing pretty well right now, so it's not like it's, it's, uh, it's broken, but it, it doesn't have the same kind of uh, um, 
sort of urban ecology feel in the county building that we now lease. Following that, the third and most recent branch, the Menominee Valley branch, was built from an old tavern that was repurposed. The center opened on September 8th, 2012. People involved in the, in the Menominee Valley project were interested in have, having made into a park. They didn't want that to turn into a place where there was crime, so they wanted to open the park at the same time that they opened activity. There's still so many people in the community that don't necessarily know about the center. Are people interested in coming to a, learn about nature? Um, is there donor support? Contributions from donors help us serve the underserved population. It helps us keep our doors open. People like to give to education. Contributions coming in will continue to help us um, have all of those impacts and will help to make Milwaukee a healthier place. I'm quite satisfied with where we are as a Milwaukee-based organization doing good things for the city. You know, we're serving over 100,000 people each year. We're serving over 50 schools. And we've got three great locations that are all unique and different, but the same in, in many ways. People are connected to each other and to the outdoors, and they, they want to see this place continue to succeed.